Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Just uh, speaking of uh, the gateway cities, if you try to do business in those cities, um, I can think of a project we built in Brooklyn, small project, seven years to get that deal done for no other reason than you know what I would describe as you know institutional corruption, um, permitting and uh, inspections and uh, you just you name it. It was an easy project to build. We do in two years here, it's seven years there. I can't believe that. Um, Everybody who tries to work in those markets, uh, you know, corporate reloads, don't have that same problem. And the cost is, you know, just unbelievable. You know, just double everything. And uh, so I, I think, you know, ultimately um, that's good for Atlanta. Uh, it's much easier to do business here, and, you know, we'll get that job growth back. The other yeah, side I of see it more as from little guys, little places, than I do from larger places. There's no question it's a headache. You know, we dropped a project in Boston because of the unions. Just don't know what it's going to cost. The flip and, side and I'm not going to pay them. The flip <laughs> yeah. side of that is that's probably one of the reasons why we have high vacancy rates so down here and they don't up there. So it's part of that, that's the right. overall It can control yeah. how many projects are built because exactly. of the time it takes. It's like I was, when I was doing the project in Boston, the guy goes, look around. There are no buildings. There are no two buildings that were built by out-of-town developers because they come here and the pain is so bad for one, yeah. they yeah. leave. Yeah. Those of us who live here, we got to make a living so they continue to develop. Mm -hmm. I'm really talking more about, like he's talking about, Charlotte, the Nashville. You know, people talk about, I went up, my friend was a big banker at Wachovia, and now he's gone on and done his own company. But he used to talk about, well, you got to leave at this certain time, Dewberry, if you're going to come see me, otherwise he's going to get stuck in traffic. So we'd go yeah. up there right, right. and drive up to, he lived up on the lake, north. Most people live south. It was never a problem to me because I live in Atlanta. <laughs> so, you know, those are, those are things that, our transportation is our single big, and, and, and for my dollar, I say that we build uh, MARTA stations on the current spine of MARTA. Understand it's got rock there and all of that, but drop all the ideas that, you know, uh, what's it, I guess it got reduced to the uh, east-west connector, the, um, the uh, trolley, the, the belt line. Belt line. Belt line, I yeah. say for my dollar, let's get on the spine. Let's get Marta to go to the TED. You know, it's it would be expensive, but look, they're trying to do it in L.A. now. It's real expensive when you wait that long. So, so that's our yeah. biggest issue. The rest of it work itself out because if you work out transportation, get people out of the automobiles, you clean up the air every day, right? So your air quality, which can be a problem in the summertime, gets better. Water is definitely an issue, but God has a lot to do with that, you know? Usually it works itself out as well. I can remember we had a drought in 86 when I got out of Georgia Tech that nobody remembers, you know. And here we are getting out of the drought now. Let's see if anybody remembers right, that. Right. You know, we've not, we, we talk about it, but we haven't solved it, kind of what you were saying about in Dallas. And, but it's a hard thing to solve. I mean, anybody for Tennessee to give us uh, the right there, we're going to be waiting a long time. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I'll and, give and you the last word, okay. Jeff. Oh, I know thanks. you've been thinking about this issue a lot, so. You know, I think we're, we're faced with a unique opportunity uh, to answer your question a little bit differently. Um, we are competing for resources much differently than we ever have, whether those be federal dollars or, or talent. Uh, you know, we're on a global stage now, whether we want to believe it or not, but we, we really are. And I think the opportunity for Atlanta and in, in the leadership of Atlanta is to think about this part of the United States as much more of a mega region. Uh, as John said, from the triangle you know, down to Birmingham, uh, there's going to be roughly 50 million people living in that, that part of the world in the next few decades, and, and that's going to be uh, a powerhouse of industry if we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And you have areas of, that we talk about core markets with D.C. and New York and Boston and some of the other ones. You know, those are set up naturally and, and geographically right now to, to outpace us, but we've got here in Atlanta, the opportunity to lead that mega region more so than any of the other cities. And I think if we get caught up in some of the issues that we have in our, our backyard that we need to correct clearly, then we'll lose that powerhouse uh, position. And so I think we, the leadership, is faced with an interesting opportunity, I think, in Atlanta to lead that region for resources uh, much more so than we ever have. So I think we've got to think a little bit more about community and a broader community than we ever have. Well said, well said. Jeff, do we have time for our last audience question? Okay. Um, 
you, okay, good. You want to put the last one up for us? Yeah. Uh, this one is, um, what is the most important challenge facing the local real estate market? Is it unemployment, transportation, political fragmentation, or natural resources? And while you are uh, punching the buttons, and, and, and by the way, it is our pleasure to provide this technology to you, although I've got to tell you that we have had some trouble with it in the past. Every time we do one of these, when I go home, my garage door is open for some reason. So I think we've got that one fixed. But if yours is open, just let us know. We'll see what we can do about that. But any questions? Yes, sir. I, I happen to think that um, Georgia State's a good school, too. So you have Georgia State, Emory, Georgia Tech, Morehouse, Spelman, all great schools. We could probably, Kennesaw's coming on. What is a little bit embarrassing is the schools we go to before we go to those schools. Uh, but certainly we have, uh, secondarily, we have outstanding education and a good educated workforce. And as I said, uh, I mean, you can take a poll in the room, but, you know, there are a lot of bright folks coming here from schools outside the region that are opting not to necessarily, you know, a lot of Duke folks or a lot of Charlotte guys go to Charlotte, you know. A lot of UVA go to Richmond, they'll go to D.C. You know, I know, I travel around, know all these guys, you know, so I say, where'd you guys go? Well, they, that's where we go. But you get a lot here, you know. Have, have, go see a Chapel Hill basketball game at the bar and you'll see a lot of Chapel Hill. Go see a UVA game and you'll see a lot of them so that helps the workforce wake forest you know um, I, I don't think that that's uh, you know I would answer that question with C even though nobody else did and and I can tell you I'm quite pleased that uh, our new mayor used to work in the legislation in the state government and him working with the state is 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 very encouraging to me, his ability to get things done. I mean, I think we all know it's transportation. We have an issue with that. But it's not like we have bad roads. You know, we got good roads. What we need is, you know, everybody says we're the poster child for sprawl, right? Well, let me tell you, I've been looking to do a hotel deal in Chicago, and I had to, something happened. We were in a snowstorm a couple years ago, so I had to go to Milwaukee to pick this guy up coming in from L.A. because he couldn't get into Chicago because they already closed the airport. So we'd get in the car, drive up there, we're daring. I said, I used to live in Virginia and Boston. I know how to drive in this stuff. <laughs> so we drive up there, pick him up. I'm like, dude, you think we got sprawl? They got a lot more sprawl. But what they have is a train to get you out of sprawl downtown and back. That's what changes the sprawl because it's pretty cool to sit on the train and read the Wall Street Journal and or whatever you want to read, and, and have a muffin and a cup of coffee than it is sitting in the car. You know, the, you know, road rage. I don't drive. I, I walk to the office, actually. I'm renting a house in Ansley Park so I can walk to Peachtree Point in the morning, weather permitting. My dog doesn't really matter what the weather is, so I kind of got to go where he goes, she wants to go. But that, that, to me, is our biggest issue, the political fragmentation, which I think is getting worked out. Um, and, and then you wrap that around solving transportation and, you know, solving employment or whatever. And, and education and the national natural resources thing, you know, that that could take a while. That's when we ought to just collectively pray, you know, for a lot of rain because we don't, you know, nobody downstream in Florida is going to give up theirs. Nobody upstream in Tennessee is going to give up theirs. So, but you know, this man went to University of Colorado, didn't you? Did you go? You know, they got pretty good issues out there too. They got they got water, you know, issues. So we're not alone in that regard. We can't control that as much as the others. Let's, let's focus on what we can control. So I think our education, I don't think our uneducated, I mean, I think our job force is, is great. You know, you, you would argue research triangles a little more cerebral and you could argue all day long that Boston is.
but they have the similar problems that, that everybody else has. So I'm not, I guess that's shut the heck up, right? <laughs> um, I'm not pessimistic at all about Atlanta. No. no, don't let him have it. Don't let him have it. <laughs> no, you're, well, you're done. You're done. I'm done. No, I have a leadership that will turn this thing around. Uh, but, you know, we have to be cognizant of the issues, and, and I think we are. And I think to Mike's point, you know, we, we have to act on them. And, and that starts with political unity, which I think we'll get now out of the mayor's office with the governors and, and the state house. I think Kasim is, is, is switched on in solving those issues and working with folks. You know, I, that's a, I think it's an excellent question, and at the risk of offending Julian, I'll tell you my opinion, is I think all of these universities do a, a fair to great job of, of selling their, their wares. I think we're missing the opportunity of collaboration, and I think that's, that's what we need to do, again, as industry and city leaders, is to try to package that up and sell through the issues and break down the silos. But we're doing that with, George, with George Tech's doing that with Emory. I mean, you couldn't get, you know, Harvard and MIT together because there were too many egos up there, I guess. But we are doing that with Emory with biomedicine, bioengineering, and, and getting closer and closer together and, and, and doing great, phenomenal things with them. So I, I think that's starting to occur. President Wagner, and it was started with President Clough, President Wagner, Emory, and President Clough at Tech, and now with, 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 with Bud Peterson, it's, that's, that is taking on a life of its own, and it's snowballing. So I think that will start occurring. And then I think Georgia State having the real estate program, I think there's no, you know, it's kind of all dovetailing. With this recent idea the University of Georgia wants to get in engineering, though, that might upset a few folks. But, <laughs> but, but I think that's starting to occur. Yeah, we've got excellent relationships, for example, with construction management and architecture. Exactly. Their students they to dovetail. Their student, yep, right. absolutely. There's no absolutely. reason to fight. We ought to work together. No, except you guys don't want to play us in football, though. Not now. No, you guys no, are too good. Exactly. Exactly. The first game we lost, by the way, um, was to a school with a population, I think a student population of 450 students. But they were all football players, so. <laughs> Is there another question? Leverage up your asset versus deleveraging your asset? I think it's an asset by asset. Play, I think you just summed what our problem was. Uh, boy, this asset doesn't work as an investment. Let's try putting debt on it. Works now. Right, that was I think part of our problem. You know, we got out of how we invested in the early '90s, kind of back of the napkin, and made debt kind of fuel the investment. What happened between '05 and, and late '07, and I think that now we have much better stewards of capital, thinking about if it works on an unleveraged basis, let's try to go put maybe 40, 50, 60 percent on the asset uh, based on these really accretive rates that we have right now. Will we get back to it works at 85 percent? That's the only way it works. Absolutely, we're going to get back to that. No question. I have to actually go catch a flight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave okay, a minute I, I early. Think. So, okay. 